I really don't have a lot of memories. I was only nine years old at the time. It wasn't until later in my life I finally learned the significance of the Grinnell decision. There was a question whether we were able to fish in Lake Superior according to the treaty. They were saying that we had to fish inland. If you look at Red Cliff, we have maybe one river and a couple little streams. How would we subsist on something like that? You have to go back to how did the people that negotiated the treaty, what was the intent? And that was, of course, to fish in Lake Superior. My father's name was on the decision itself, but it involved seven other people. I had just gotten out of the military service. I had been drawing unemployment, maybe kind of also looking for work. But uh, if you look back and reflect back to that time period of 1969, what was happening was that Indian men, in particular, were being arrested for hunting, fishing, and gathering. I mean, it was story after story, not only here in Red Cliff, but throughout Indian country, where that was happening. It just wasn't being arrested. There was fines. You had to go to jail. Your whole family probably didn't eat. Hunting, fishing, and gathering has always been something that we, we did. And so what else could you do? How long can this go on? Take it to the next level and say, hey, look, there are treaty rights. We do have them protected or we don't. And let's get it into the court system. Let them decide. And so we said, well, let's, let's do a test case. Let's set a gill net and do a test for the fishing. Then we began to get more serious about planning it out, try to figure out who would be wanting or willing to do this. Our thoughts then was to say, well, let's go ahead and let the newspapers know, the Ashton Daily Press, the Duluth News Tribune, uh, Channel 3, 6, and 10, let them all know, in fact, even let the game wardens know that this is what we're going to do on such and such a time and date. That's what we're going to do. So we went down, we set our net off the uh, campground. At 9 or 10 o'clock the next morning, people began to gather at the landing. Even uh, commercial fishermen that were non-Indian from Bayfield, lots of tribal members and elders. We got out there in the water and uh, we started to lift. Uncle Butts Peterson, Dick Gurnow, and Philip Gordon were in one boat. Alan Bear and Roger Basney and myself were in another boat. And so as we began to go out and lift, the game wardens were then already coming toward us over from the Royce Point area. He said, well, here they come now. And Philip Gordon, he lifted, and the first big thing that came out was a big sucker. And when he held it up, everybody was cheering all over. They were just yelling and screaming, and oh my goodness. The game wardens were right there by us with the loudspeaker. And he says, uh, you guys, you're arrested. And so we come on board, and there were cheers from the shoreline and saying, well, where are they taking you? He said, well, we're going to Washburn, Bayfield County. We're going to be charged. However long it took to go through the court system until the final result was that it is a treaty protected right and the decision was final. Hunting and fishing, gathering, treaty rights protected. It's really important because fishing has gone on Lake Superior since I think the 16th or 17th century. With the migration of the tribes, we all ended up in La Pointe. It was just part of our, our whole life. I just hope that we're able to continue that tradition. I don't think it'll ever die out, I don't. <laughs>